it's so spooky at night. Wait, no, this isn't night. This is day with fog. Ugh, it's so spooky around here. Ugh. Where am I going to this at? Hmm. Should, maybe I should use a train for him. Oh. Um, hello, Murdoch. Um, um, uh, hey, Murdoch. What are you waking oh, me up? James, I'm trying to take a nap for crying out loud. Ugh. So, throat from doing this. Honestly. Really? <coughs> <coughs> See? See, James? Ugh. Some engines. Or do they, huh? Okay. So, Murdoch has a sore throat. Somehow. Oh, James, I need your help with something. Oh, um, what is it, Wilbur? So have a good train to get ready for murder. But it's way ever for me to move. Can you help? Um, sure, just lead the way. That way I can help you. Okay, follow me. Alright, so, where is this good train at, Wilbur? Well, it's in front of you. Just a look. Seriously? This is the good train. Oh, come on, you can move it easily, please. I seen you push five flat beds. Not with he heavy steel on it. Just watch. Ugh. See? I can't move it. Obviously, I can't move it. I'm taking it. Pa, that's because you haven't even tried hard. Then I'd like to see you try then. Maybe you can move it yourself and see. Alright, I will. Just watch. Tender and never ever struggles with a heavy good train like this. Come on, I pushed engines like this with trains this long. This can't be that heavy. Oh my goodness, like, this is heavy. Come on, come on, come on, move, move. Yuck. Uh, uh, this train is heavy. Uh, you were right. Well, looks just look who's struggling now. Maybe you do need it. Help James. Okay. Guess you can help push. Just get the back. Oh, okay. I will. Uh, James, what happened to my train last night? What are you talking about? The long line of flatbeds that you were meant to shunt. Oh, um, didn't Wilbur give it to you? He did not give it to me whatsoever. You were supposed to bring it for me, James. Literally, that was your job. Oh, so I was supposed to do it. Oh, clearly. You don't know what you're talking about, Murdoch. Oh, please. You were the only one over there with Wilbur, so you obviously could have helped him. But yes, Diesel or something. He used to, he, he, I don't know what he's up to. He's like, he used to be devious, but I don't know what happened to him now. So clearly, why don't you ask him instead? Oh, I don't want to ask him. Besides, he's way too busy. Oh, please, I can smell him from a mile away. He's probably coming right now. In, well, maybe five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. There he is, Murdoch. I told you he was coming. Bring him over here then. Hey, Diesel. Uh, yes, James? Come over here. Alright, I guess I'm coming then. Um, uh, okay, James. Here I am. So, what do you want to ask me about? Did you take Murdoch's train? No, this one from Molly. I told you, Murdoch. He didn't take it, so obviously he couldn't have anybody. It could have been Hank. Henry or any other strong engine on this island. Maybe a couple of diesels, yes, but not diesel. And that's when the train disappeared. Man, blame me for it. I don't know why he did, but he clearly did, anyways. That's strange. Train disappearing. A train of mine disappeared too yesterday. Oh yeah, a train did disappear. Well then, who could be responsible for it? Oh, please. Strange disappearing doesn't happen any time. Henry, you... The flying clipper was delivered, right? I mean, clearly, the fish was delivered. Actually, it was not. I couldn't find the flying clipper yesterday at Nefford Harbor. They said it disappeared all of a sudden. 
Ha, you're playing my coupling. Actually, I'm telling the truth. It did disappear. You don't believe me? I'll tell you the story. It did disappear. Uh oh. Um. And when it did disappear, I couldn't find the fish anywhere. I mean, smelly fish is not hard to miss, but I couldn't find it. No one could find it ever. So obviously, I'm not lying to you. Oh, um, Henry, I didn't mean to lie to you like that. I mean, whatever. I mean, I, you know what I mean. It's Percy then. He should know too. Henry's right. The mail train also t disappeared too. I couldn't find it anywhere in any of the yards. They said I thought I must have lost it, but I didn't lose it at all. I placed it exactly at Knackford, the start of the mail run. We couldn't find it anywhere last night. I was so exhausted. Ugh, I was going to see you. Percy's right. I couldn't find any good string either to shunt for Hank. You know, that big American engine. Oh, well, well, this is strange. I know, something or someone is taking our trains. Hello, everybody. I'm here for story night. So, are you ready for the story? Because this one is pretty, pretty interesting. You all heard about Dane, right? The ghost of Hill Godred? Well, this story is an interesting flashback. Here it is. Before the smelter's yard was ever around, there was an engine in the 1900s named Dane, or by his number 1020. He was quite a f engine. He was almost the same as me, and he ran the Hill Country Branch line, which was his old line during the time. He would always run steel from the steel mill, which included barrel and furnace on the mainland. He would always deliver them on time. He loved the job, and he always did it. He loved the steel runs. He would travel down the line, start up slowly, and try to build up speed. He would always build up to six flatbeds of heavy steel. He was quite the strong engine at the time as he was always on time. There was one part of the line he did not like. It was close to a cliff edge, and if he was to derail, he would fall to his doom. Unfortunately, that what would happen one he was traveling down the line very, very far. He couldn't see a thing, even with his lamps, all four on. He didn't even have to a lantern blocking the line. That was until it was too late when he struck. It took a few days to recover him back on the rails. When he was recovered, he had a huge dent in his boiler. So, the oak controller had no choice but to scrap him. Some say, up to this day, you might hear his ghost prowling the rails, looking for revenge and to avenge his old times. So if you ever hear a mysterious whistle blow on the hill Godger, that's him saying to stay clear or else he'll strike you. I hope this story doesn't actually frighten anyone. I mean, it's a serious story anyways, but I'm okay. Better get going now. See you all later. Anything scruff back there? Not yet, with nothing at all. Hmm, maybe we should check over here. This signal is here rather strong, right, Old Bailey? Nothing yet, with nothing at all. I haven't found anything at all. Well, then, I guess it's time for us to go, and um, uh, I we better get going. Uh, 
We spooked you around this time, but she listened to the old story they ever told us about the other night. Ugh, I swear that story gives me the creeps. Whoa, what was that? Oh no, it's the ghost of Dane. Oh goodness. Whoa, what just happened? Uh, I got near out by a ghost. Near out by a ghost. Ah. So you said nothing. Nothing with ghosts ever. Yes, that ghost pushed me in. Scruff. He wrote Scruff and my two trucks behind me. All right, I'm going to talk to Scruff. Stay right where you are. All right, Scruff, let's just the ghost. Um, covered in scrap. Mm, scrap metal. No, wait, rust. Yes, rusty metal. And, um... Scary whistle. Any good news yet, Edward? <sighs> no good news yet. Scruff and Whiff were derailed and attacked last night by Dane. It's forever spooky. I didn't think the story was actually true, but it is true. It was a ghost lurking around the old concert. Who knows if production on that line will ever, ever resume. But without the steel, who knows what would happen to the industries. Without steel, we have no rails. Without steel, no buildings. Well, there could be something else happening. Guys, guys, you hear the news of, per of with and Scruff being attacked last night? Yes, Percy, we heard. <sighs> it's never spooky that a ghost attacked them. I mean, I know, ghosts. Yes, but, um, but it's still spooky. <laughs> oh, please, a ghost. Ha, ha, ha. You guys are pulling couplings. Ghosts do not exist. I should know. I have never seen a ghost in my life. And if he would not, if I would see one, I would not believe it. Ghosts are just made up to spook you around this time of year. Besides, uh, you know, and even if we're a ghost to exist, what would happen to an engine if it was a ghost? And could they pull anything? Push anything? Scruff? A whiff and scruff couldn't have been pushed by a ghost, obviously. So this Dane isn't a ghost, actually. He's just coming in scrap metal or rust, whatever it's called. Well, Joshua does have a point about that since a ghost could push anything or anyone still something has to be done about him and fast well luckily for you i've got somebody aboard this coach that will help us tonight edward me and you along with the person are going to find dane and put an end to his reign <laughs> i give to you old bailey old bailey's in the coach right now that's right, I'm gonna help you guys find Dane and, you know, a bunch of other things. I guess I'll come along. Some are rolling into a mystery, making adventure history. Don't know what will come to be, so I'm glad that you are here. Try not to return and we'll be glad when this adventure's done. Remember, it's supposed to be fun, so I'm glad that you are here. Cause it's a whole new place. We're off the map.
Uh, oh no, I think I heard his whistle. Uh, stop, that word. Stop, 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 stop. Just stop. Please stop. Uh, 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 oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, don't, 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 get, don't get possessed. Don't get possessed. Okay, let's get going. Come on, James. We gotta get going and find Dane. Hope we talk to him about this. Uh, I regret this choice, Edward. Uh, I regret this too, but we have to do it anyways. Alright, Dane should be here on this bridge somewhere. Show yourself. Who dares trespass on my branch like this? <sighs> Go away! Go away! I demand it! <sighs> Looks like you ain't going anywhere, I suppose. So, what do you want from me? Why are you taking trains? I'm not taking trains at all. In fact, I'm doing all of you a favor. <sighs> I'm sorry. I should have been so lonely ever since. Oh, well, we can help you find friends. There's a lot of friends here on the island. Lots of engines who would take you as a friend. Be your first friend, I suppose. And I'll be a second one, just like my number. Old friend. Are you sure? Friends help each other in times of despair. Even others are in the air. I mean, think about it. A long time ago, there was a flood on the island. And an engine named Albert was stuck. And however, mainland, Harold was nearby, who was assisting with any storm damage on the mainland. Think about it, Dane. If you were to be restored, you couldn't be alone. Besides, you got two diesels up there in the steel works, or the iron works. However, they're both mean. And even if both of them pick on you and tease you, you can still do things. Think about it. You're stronger than you think. Even if you're a medium-sized tender engine like myself, like, well, the engine's over here. And if you go with assistance from friends, you can still do things. I suppose you guys are right. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be your friends. Just so long as I get restored back to working order. Excellent. Come with us. We know a good place where you can get restored back to working order and get rid of all that rust. Alright, I'm coming with you guys. Right behind you. Or in front of you. I feel so new. Look at me. I'm a glorious engine. Oh, hello there. You must be Scarloe, the gallant engine. 
Oh, hello. You must be Dane, the one who ran those steel runs way back in the day. It's nice to meet you. Uh, I remember the time that I, I see you pass by on the line. Oh, uh, what good old days. We should talk about them. We should catch up. Uh, old timers. Oh, I'm sure we'll catch up. Well, record coming now. You know, lots of busyness to do. Alright, well, see you later, Scott Lowy, and have a nice day. You too, Dane. You too.